Hello again team, it's Jess or Jashikarin and welcome back for another video. Today we're setting up for September in my bullet journal, but before we get to that, as per usual, we're just going to have a look at how this month was going. So as you'll remember from my August plan with me, my theme for August was Olaf's summer holiday. Because where I live in the southern hemisphere it's currently winter, but the majority of my viewer base is in the northern hemisphere where it's summer, I thought it was fun to use a theme that kind of married the two seasons together. Although I did really like this theme, I found that in August I didn't use my journal quite as much as I thought I was going to. After winning our house auction and then getting stuck in lockdown in Melbourne, and then coming back and getting stuck in lockdown in Wellington, life was just a little bit crazy. To add to this, when the Wellington lockdown was announced, my partner Vogel and I decided we were going to move house by ourselves rather than waiting until after the lockdown period, so that also added some additional craziness to the month. After all of my August pages though, I did have some dedicated spreads for the moving process, and I have some videos of those ones linked in the description box below if you're interested. August is pretty much over now though, and it's on to September. When it came to picking a theme for September, I honestly had pretty much no idea what I wanted to do. I feel like I say this a lot, but it was very much one of those instances where I either had too much inspiration or not enough inspiration. I kind of kept flip-flopping between having way too many ideas for what I wanted to do and then being completely uninspired by any of them. The main inspiration for this theme came from this picture from Martha's Journal over on Instagram. I really liked the combination of the craft and the black paper with the kind of pastel tones, so that's what I decided to go for for September. Pastel isn't really a colour palette that I typically gravitate towards, and doing the amount of washi taping in this setup that I did, certainly not something I'm comfortable with. So this setup took a little bit longer to do than you might otherwise expect. Normally I consider using washi tape for decoration as a way to help you set up your spreads faster. But there was a lot of umming and ahhing on my part to decide which tapes to use and where to place them. In terms of timing, from first touch of the pen to final erasings, this quote page took about 25 minutes. As always, this time doesn't include idea generation time or sketching in time. The quote that I decided to go for for September comes from the second half of a George Bernard Shaw quote that says, Life isn't about finding yourself. Life is about creating yourself. I thought this one was suitable for September because in the next month I really want to get back on track with my habits and trying to build in some more work towards my goals. With August being so crazy, I certainly fell off with habit tracking and didn't check in with my goal planner and all of those kind of things. So for me, September very much feels like a reset. As part of this, I also want to make sure that for the month coming, I'm picking habits that are actually aligned with the life that I want to create for myself. Sometimes I find that once I've set up my habit tracker for the month, the picking of habits kind of becomes an afterthought and I just default into the same habits that I always track. These aren't necessarily the ones that are going to be the most impactful or ones that I even need to track sometimes. For instance, tracking things like reading on a daily basis isn't really something I need to track because I don't read on a daily basis and I don't necessarily even think that I want my future self to be the person who reads every day. Yes, I would like to read more, but that doesn't mean it needs to be something I'm making myself try to do every single day. Another example comes with taking my medication. This is a pretty good habit now. I don't really need to track this anymore. So would space on my habit tracker be better served for tracking something else? A question for future Jess, but I'm hoping that this quote will act as a reminder for what my focus for September is. The cover page here though took about 30 minutes, and then it was over the page and onto the monthly log. This spread took the longest amount of time to set up, coming in at about an hour, and it's probably because these are the most decoration heavy pages. For the calendar portion of this spread, I decided to use craft paper, so I wanted to lay down any of the decoration first so the craft paper could sit on top of this. For the washi tape that I'm using here, the majority of them just came from Kmart in a set of 12, which I normally only use for masking in my journal, I don't typically actually use them for decoration. As I said, pastels aren't really my kind of colour palette, I'm usually a lot more drawn to brighter colours or jewel colours, but I'm glad I was able to pull these ones out for this theme. In terms of the purple washi tape with the stars though, this one I actually got from my friend Rachel, so I'm not too sure where it's come from. I thought it was nice to have a washi tape that was a little more saturated though, and I made sure to tie it in with the rest of the spread by including some little star doodles around the page as well. For drawing in all of our little cloud decorations though, for these I used my Tombow jewel brush markers, the numbers of which can be found in the description box. 
Because I knew I wasn't going to be able to get flat colour with these, I intentionally decided to draw all of the clouds in by using little circles. Just so the areas where I went over multiple times with the pen were more evenly distributed through each doodle. I also applied a similar technique to the moon, which I thought gave it a little bit more of a typical moon texture. With those decorative elements done though, it's time to stick in the calendar. Unlike the calendar that I set up in the September plan with me for the giveaway bullet journal, for this one I actually managed to include all of the days of the month when measuring up the calendar. For all of the craft paper and black paper elements in this setup, I used my Archer and Olive A5 notepad. These ones come with a dot grid on them which is nice, so it's a more preferable alternative for me rather than using regular black or craft paper. To draw in the dividing lines for my calendar, I used a white acrylograph pen in the 0.7mm nib size. This is also the pen that I used to write over the black paper for the titles, but I actually ended up using a white gel pen to do any of the outlines of the clouds that came in contact with each other. I'm not too sure why I decided to do this. I probably could have just used one pen rather than both of them. <laughs> with my preference probably being the acrylograph because I find it has less transfer compared to the gel pen. Even when it's dry, sometimes I find my gel pen does transfer to the other side of the page. I find this to be more of a problem when I'm using it a lot though, and these spreads I only used it a small amount so I'm not too worried. After writing in the days of the month though, the monthly log was finished and it was time to move on to some trackers. The first of these is going to be my habit tracker, and I've decided to go with a vertical style tracker for September. This is one of those trackers that is very tried and true for me, I really like using this one. This was the first style of tracker that I could actually get to work for me. Previous to this one, my relationship with habit trackers had been very hit or miss. Where for the part of some months I'd use it quite well, and then there were some months that I would not touch it at all. The first habit tracker that I was actually able to maintain my use of throughout the entire of a month was this style. So it felt fitting that because for September I'm trying to get back into actually paying attention to my habits, I'd use the style that I know works best for me. If you were looking to experiment with a new style of habit tracker though, I do have a video on some different habit tracker styles that could be useful. That one's linked in the description below as well. For this one though, from first touch of the pen to final erasings, it took about 33 minutes. At this stage, I haven't finalised what I want my habits for September to be, but when I do, the icons for those will be going along the top on the craft paper. When it comes to filling this habit tracker in, with each column being a habit and each row being a day of the month, I'll be colouring in the little boxes for any of my completed habits, and leaving them empty or possibly colouring them in with black for any habits I don't complete. Sometimes I like to have a way to signify that I didn't complete a habit, just for those instances where I go a couple of days without filling in my habit tracker, and then I know with certainty which ones I didn't complete, compared to the ones that I just didn't fill in. With the habit tracker finished though, it was then on to my next tracker, which is for my content creating. This one just gives me a summary of the content that I want to create for both of my YouTube channels, my Instagram account, and for my patrons over on Patreon. The format of this one I've kept pretty consistent over the past couple months, going along with the whole if it ain't broke don't fix it kind of mentality. This page does kind of end up being a bit of a double up, because I do have a content calendar in Notion, but I found that when I try to leave it out I oddly miss it, even if it is a little redundant. At this stage I don't have my content calendar planned out for September, and I should probably get onto that because we really don't have that much time until September rolls around. In terms of timing, from first touch of the pen to final erasings, this page took about 30 minutes. But as we've said, this doesn't include idea generation time or sketching in time. Flipping over the page though, we are now onto my productivity tracker. This is a tracker that I keep using, then cutting, then bringing back, then cutting it out again. <laughs> but despite it not being one of my staple spreads, I do quite enjoy using it. Plus, I especially like the way it looks at the end of the month when I've got all of the little tasks in there. I do have a separate video on how this one works, which is also linked in the description. But in general, it effectively just gives me a snapshot of how I was productive in any given day. So was I doing a lot of schoolwork, or housework, or work for YouTube, etc. This month I've decided to put my key on a Dutch door, which I have in the middle. I'm always very conflicted with including keys in my journal, because on one hand, I know what my icons mean, so I don't really need to refer to the key to fill them in. But on the other hand, when I look back on a journal that doesn't have a key, sometimes I'm not too sure what the icons mean. The nice part about my productivity tracker is that I have been fairly consistent in what each of the symbols mean, but because it's been a little while since I've used one, I figured I'd include the key this time. I must say, I am pretty dang chuffed with how my theme for September's turning out. 
It's certainly not in my comfort zone, whether that be in terms of colours or decoration style, but I think it's quite pretty and I'm excited to use it on my weekly spreads as well. Question of the day for you guys though, what is your theme for the month coming? And a secondary question, have you actually set up for next month? This year I've been trying to set my journal up a little bit more in advance, just so that I can be a bit more timely in the release of my plan with me's. But given the aforementioned craziness of August, this one came out a little bit later. For the final flip through though, we have my quote and cover page. My calendar style monthly log using the craft paper for that calendar. My vertical habit tracker and my content planner and the return of the productivity tracker. I'm looking forward to using these spreads and I hope you guys enjoyed watching me set them up. If you did, please do make sure to give this video a big thumbs up and be sure to subscribe to my channel for more on planning, productivity and personal development. Until next time, bye!